Today we're going to fix the uh, door handle on 2005 Pontiac Vibe. Uh, the issue is the front hinge here plastic is broken so when you pull on the handle it opens by the front instead of by the back part. To begin open the door and then the top inside handle there's a Phillips head screw behind a little plastic cap. Take a small screwdriver pop the cap open and then the screw is right behind it. There's also another Phillips head screw uh, actually down in the door handle itself. Uh, you can see it there, right in the middle of the handle. Once you get those two screws out, uh, gently start at the uh, door window control. Start at one end and work your way up. And as you work your way up, it'll become loose and eventually it'll pop out. Simply flip it over gently and where the plug goes into the control, there'll be uh, two plastic tabs. Uh, simply squeeze those and the uh, door control module should come. On this door, the door handle actually pops out. Okay, starting at the bottom and working our way around, uh, there are several plastic tabs. Uh, simply start at one corner and gently start popping the uh, door pins loose. Uh, you'll actually feel them pop. And once you get that all the way around, uh, start at the bottom corner, rotate the door up, and as you rotate it up, simply slide it away from the mirror and the door skin should come off. With the door skin off, uh, you have to do some more disassembly. Here's the hanger that the uh, door handle came in. There's a Phillips screw here and here. Uh, simply take those off. Uh, the door handle is held on by a series of uh, retaining clips. Uh, simply have to take a, a pair of needle nose pliers, um, carefully reach up, squeeze, and as you squeeze, pull out, and the retaining clip will come off. With the hardware off the door, the next step is to remove the uh, plastic vapor barrier that's on the door. In this case, it's held on by an asphalt-based adhesive, extremely sticky, and in cold weather, uh, very tough to remove. Uh, it's best to have the car in a warm temperature, a heated garage or something to try this. Um, simply start at one corner and uh, work your way around pulling very carefully because you do not want to damage the vapor barrier. Uh, whether you're going to use it uh, to make a template for something else on the door or to reinstall. Plus, if you pull it slow enough, uh, you'll actually be able to reuse most of the uh, adhesive. With the vapor barrier completely loose, uh, the next step is detach any necessary wires, uh, such as your speaker, uh, noting where uh, they are located. And once you get that done, uh, you have to slide it off the door handle and then finish removing it around any wiring. Okay, with the door exposed, I've removed three Phillips screws, uh, which removes this panel right here. Uh, the nice thing is, is that they uh, were courteous enough to use Phillips screws, so pretty common tool. And I've already reached in there and pulled out our uh, plastic piece, which we need to glue back to the handle, uh, which uh, broke off. And when looking up in the top, uh, you can actually see the door handle assembly from the inside now. Uh, so it's a matter of just simply removing the rest of that and uh, putting it back together. Uh, a couple of notes on safety. Uh, this uh, particular metal bar right here is the uh, safety bar for the door. Uh, it's a hollow tube. Uh, during a side impact, it's pretty much the only thing between you and whatever hits you. And other than being a sheet metal door, there's actually a weight in the door. Okay, I've taken a uh, Torx head screw out of the inner plastic here. Uh, so now I have this end of the door handle loose. Now I have to go to the outside of the door. And there's a plastic cover about right on the other side of the uh, lock, right in line with it. Pop that off, and there's another Torx head screw. Once you take that off, then the door handle assembly will be loose. Okay, with the Torx head screw uh, removed, uh, the lock cylinder will simply wiggle, and you'll be able to pull the whole lock cylinder right out of the door. Uh, at that point, then the handle assembly simply slides out, and there's your door handle. Two screws and a couple pieces of plastic. And this is a particular item on here that's broken. Uh, with the lock assembly out, uh, one thing you want to be careful of is if the door does shut, uh, you won't be able to open it from the outside or the inside because everything's taken off. Uh, you'll have to open another door and reach in. So I recommend taking something soft and uh, placing it in the door jam uh, just as a precaution to keep the door from shutting. Okay, here I have the uh, door handle. Uh, the plastic pieces. 
Uh, I've cut up some uh, additional uh, small uh, tie straps, like electrical tie straps, and uh, use them to reinforce once I uh, start gluing things back together. I've cleaned everything with alcohol, and then I've etched the plastic uh, to help the epoxy stick to it better. Uh, use a long setting uh, curing epoxy. Uh, plastic epoxy would work good too. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stick the pieces together and then uh, start reinforcing. I have the lock assembly completely removed. Uh, and here's the door handle I fixed uh, where I epoxied. I went ahead and uh, ground around the edges to make sure it sits flush. Uh, you can also test fit it in the uh, actual handle assembly to make sure it's all good. Uh, before putting it back together, I'm going to lubricate all the metal parts on the uh, assembly. Uh, for that, I'm going to use a heavy-duty metal protector, uh, something that leaves somewhat of a film. Um, WD-40 will eventually just wash off, so you want to use something that's actually going to stick to the metal. As you can see here, it actually uh, attaches to the metal. And uh, hit the internal metal parts uh, before reassembly. Upon reinstalling the interior uh, door lock, uh, the metal rod um, over here uh, goes into a uh, tab and it's hard to see but you have to feel for it. Once you get that rod in, simply uh, move the uh, interior um, handle into position um, and then you'll feel it snap into where the uh, screw is that you took out. There's a plastic retaining um, piece and it should just snap into place. And once you have that, it will hold itself into place until you reinstall the screws. On the outside of the door handle, uh, there's a uh, plastic tab on the inner door handle. You can just line that up and it'll slide into place, uh, allowing it to snap into position. Uh, and then you also want to make sure you have the uh, plastic uh, covers uh, installed into the holes, uh, which prevents the door handle from scratching the paint and uh, causing premature rusting. Uh, with that installed, then we move on to the door handle itself, uh, which simply you have to manipulate and it'll actually slide in and forward into the position. Okay, I couldn't show you the whole process because it took two hands, but while you're trying to slide this in, on the inside of the door, on the mechanism itself, you actually have to pull part of the metal rod down up here, and that releases part of the tab. Um, that tab is what actually this handle pulls out on, so you have to move it part way down to allow the handle to slide into position. Once you have the uh, door handle slid into position, uh, you can then install your uh, lock cylinder, which will, for more or less, pretty much just drop straight in. It may take a little repositioning, but should go in. Okay, with the interior screw and door handle uh, position correct, and the uh, outside door handle screw installed and uh, tightened, uh, you just put your uh, cap in and your door handle is now fixed and uh, properly installed. Uh, just give it a quick test if you have to make any final adjustments.